All right, welcome back to Lucro Automotive Services. Today, we're giving you an update on the 1970 Corvette 350 four-speed. This car is uh, basically ready to be put up for sale. So if you want to hear about what this thing has to offer, stick around. So we've been doing some work to this uh, 1970 350, 350 horsepower, four-speed convertible Corvette. Uh, we brought it in, it had been in stored for quite some years. I drove it a couple times, the tires were flat spotted and it was all over the road. You hit the brakes and it changed lanes. Uh, initially it wasn't running. We already resolved that in the previous video. So now we've gone ahead and done some things to make this thing driver ready. So we've resurfaced all four brake rotors. We repacked the front wheel bearings and adjusted the front bearings. Uh, we rebuilt the rear calipers because they were leaking. We're getting ready to bleed the uh, bleed and flush the brake fluid systems so that we know all of, all of our air is out of our system. This car already has an upgraded front sway bar. It has an added rear sway bar, new shocks, new brake pads, uh, aftermarket intake, new carb, uh, new HEI distributor, and uh, basically it's ready to be put on the road here shortly. So. I'm going to finish up a couple things on my end, get this thing down onto its new tires because we picked up some Cooper Cobra radial, where are these, radial GTs to uh, make it ride nice and you know the 20 year old tires that were on it were not great. When I did drive it I didn't hear any abnormal noises from the transmission, everything shifted fine. Uh, other than changing lanes when you hit the brakes, the brakes were working, um, but we're going to resolve that issue by bleeding the brakes out. And no noises from the rear end. So realistically, this is a pretty solid car. It's a low 70,000 mile three owner vehicle. The numbers matching engine block, numbers matching transmission, and date correct rear uh, differential. So this should be an 11 to 1 compression big valve double bump head uh small block 350. pretty good car this is being offered up for sale the lady that owns it uh, she and her husband had owned this thing since like 73 or 74. um they enjoyed it every now and then it clearly didn't get driven very much with only 70,000 miles on it and uh, it's time for it to move on to its next owner. Uh, we will be listing this vehicle up for $32,000 or best offer. Um, and you guys can contact us here at the shop at 614-873-4470 if you'd like to know more about the vehicle. At any rate, I gotta get to work. So let's get this thing wrapped up and get it moving on down the line. Somebody's gonna love this car. I, I like it a lot. I kinda wanna keep it, but I don't have any place to put it. That is a dome top piston. So this is a uh, big valve, double bump head, 11 to one compression, 350 horse GM block that is VIN coded to this car, as is the transmission. So that's pretty awesome. Um, it makes it a little complicated to get fuel because premium 93 isn't really enough to support that. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure the valves are adjusted correctly and then I'm going to back the timing down so that we don't detonate the pistons out of this thing. And uh, we'll take this thing for a test drive because I got it here. I might as well drive it. Just saying. Ooh. They have a lot of play in them. Let's get some feeler gauges out and check them. This is a solid lifter cam. So this car was built by the factory to rev. Um, we look up some specs. Yeah, let me get a feeler gauge. All right, so the factory manual puts valve lash on this at 20 intake and 25 exhaust. Hot. Now I'm not adjusting it hot because I like my fingers. So we're gonna pull like three thou off of that. We're gonna adjust them cold at 17 on the intake and 
22 on the exhaust, which it needs lashed. We'll just we'll just leave it at that. They're loose and they're gonna make noise no matter what because one, it's a roller rocker. Two, it's a <laughs> it's a solid lifter cam, and uh, they just there's gaps in there so. That way they don't float the valves at high RPM. Let me grab a wrench and an Allen and we will place the honey by bench over here. I need to clean off my little tool tray. Um, we will go ahead and lash these valves out. That explains why they sounded rattly. They were loose. Gravity. All right, this isn't very exciting. We're going to fast forward a little bit. This is a tedious process. Basically, you have to, I remember right, the intake valve is opening and you adjust the exhaust valve. When the exhaust valve is starting to close, you do the intake valve. And that way you know you're on the back side of the cam. And you do that to all of them, so. Let me get a paint marker and mark my rockers so that I know which ones I've already done. That way I don't keep going over and doing them over again. Go find a paint marker. Happy with that. Paint mark on, let's rotate our motor. hands. Here's my VIN. 404625. 404625. engine. S404625. Motor's matching. Nice. So now underneath the car you can see it has headers. Uh, looks like the starter was replaced at some point in time. Fuel pump was replaced at some point in time. It'll probably need done again. Radiator's not all green. It looks pretty good up in there. Mm. Bushings aren't horrible. They are original, but they're not dry rotted like a lot of them. I guess they it could it could use a set of upper and lower control arm bushings. Ball joints are original. They've still got the rivets. Shocks have been replaced. Updated sway bar. Delco Remy calipers. Yep, S404625. Correct number. I could use rear arm bushings. Axle seals aren't leaking. That's pretty good. Pinion seal's not leaking. There was a date code on the diff. 69W14. Y'all probably can't see all that. 
And I see a 10, 14, 69. Looks like a 10A0 maybe before that. I don't know. Can't really decipher it. So that's what this car's got in it. It's got the numbers matching trans, numbers matching engine, correct heads, big port, uh, big valve heads. So pretty good little combination. This is an 11 to one compression uh, ratio motor. So modern fuels aren't gonna be up to snuff. Uh, so I think I'll uh, get this thing warmed up, make sure my valve adjustment is good. I already did all my valve adjustments. As the, as the intake valve opens, I adjust my exhaust valve. As the exhaust valve closes, I adjust my intake. Um, I roll it through, basically take your timing mark on your crankshaft up to the, up to the timing mark and then turn it 90 degrees, make more adjustments, turn it 90 degrees, make more adjustments, turn it 90 degrees, make more adjustments. On this one, because it's a pretty hot cam, I did it by the, by the valves opening and closing. Um, so there's a bunch of different methods to adjust valves on these, but it's just a tedious thing you do and you get it done and you double check it and you're happy with it and then you go drive it because that's what it's about. I thought I'd talk to you about this 67 El Camino we got working on. Uh, it came in last week when we were working on the yellow Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme and it had a wheel falling off. And he's like, there's also a noise coming from the rear end. And I'm like, what do you mean there's a noise coming from the rear end? And you can hear it in the video. And we got uh, got it around, pulled the cover. Jeff pulled the cover and nothing but water came out of it. She's looking a little crisp. Needless to say, this project escalated quickly. Uh, Jeff's been rocking on it. He's got the new front disc brake system on it from, uh, who did we get that from, Right Stuff. We had a bunch of fitment problems trying to replace the brakes that were on it, so uh, after fiddle farting around with that long enough, we decided to just put a whole system on it. So new booster, new proportioning valve, spindles, calipers, brackets. Uh, we actually put F-body front steering arms on it because they're a shorter, uh, they're shorter length. They're shorter length, so it'll give a quicker steering ratio. Uh, we'll probably end up talking to him about tie rod ends, center link, all that stuff. Uh, idler arm, because those are probably all worn out as well. Jeff's already got the new rear axle in it, and we've got good brakes put on it. This one is actually a 10 bolt posi we picked up uh, up north by Toledo. We go up there, picked it up. It's a fresh axle bearings, axle seals. The has the a GM posi in it with a GM 308 ring and pinion, which will make this thing real nice. I think we're gonna put U joints in it. We found the fuel tank was leaking, so we have a fuel tank on order. It should be here in a couple days, so we can keep moving forward on this thing. But it's a. Uh, it's a project. This one came in. It was a it was a pretty good mess, but we'll make it better. All right. Well, that's all work. I'm going to get done on this car today. I got to run some cylinder heads over to the machine shop. It's time to do that. I got my valves adjusted, brakes are bled. Time to put the wheels on and then take this thing out. Um, explained a little bit about what's going on with that El Camino, where we're at with it. We're waiting on some parts for it. Uh, hopefully, I'll be driving this thing this weekend or Monday. And uh, we'll get this thing listed up for sale. If you are interested in this car, it is uh, being offered for sale. I am kind of an intermediary for the uh, for the owner. You're buying it from the owner of the car, not from me. Um, basically, part of the purchase price will go towards the repairs and the tires, and then I'm getting a commission on the sale. So if you guys want a really bitchin' 70 Corvette, give us a call. Thanks for watching. Click like, subscribe, leave us a comment below. Have a good one.